Hello boys and girls, welcome to another episode of Folks Bra. Today on the bench we have another treadmill board. This one was uh, very kindly sent to us through uh, by one of you viewers. So thank you for that. I'm not going to mention the, the person's name. So anyway, let's jump on the bench, let's have a look and let's see what is wrong with this treadmill board. Right, so here we are on the bench with our board that our viewer sent us. Um, you can see our AC mains comes in here. The fuse is missing. A whole lot of plug-in connectors that will go to different uh, boards in different places. And these two connectors up here, motor M plus and minus, are the motor terminals. Either way, this is a rather very simple. And there's a little blue knob there that looks cracked, actually. But we'll check that as we go along. So we come through our fuse. We've got another fuse down to this part of the board down here. We've got our mains bridge rectifier up here, safety capacitor, and big bulk storage capacitor, optocoupler down there to drive this uh, fit and rectifier. Well, uh, that one's a fly like diode, uh, but to drive this. Uh, IGBT or FET, whatever it is. And down here is our little microprocessor. Now, this is the DCMD67. The one I worked on previously had another switcher down here. And in here, there's an IC marker up there. It's marked U12 and it's not there. So I'm wondering where that is. Of course, down here, voltage regulator. So, and then we've got uh, some LEDs. So it looks very similar to the, the previous one we worked on, except some something looks missing there. And in here, it looks like it's been scraped a bit. So, let's do this. Have I got a fuse? Let me just put one here. We'll measure for continuity. You can hear that. Just measuring a, a new fuse to put in. So we'll pop the fuse in there. And then what we're going to do I'm going to measure resistance. Oops. Across the AC mains. That's the. So it's open circuit. Well, it looks like no. 3.4 ohms. Okay. So we have a short across AC main. So that's why it's blown the fuse. And let's see if I can show you this. <coughs> See up there. Let me just take the autofocus off. So perhaps you can see that mob looks like it's cracked. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just take that mob off, off camera and I'll take it out. And then we'll have a look, see do we still have the short. Okay, let me take that out and we'll come back. And of course I'm being a complete twist about this, right? 
So I took the mob out and I took the bridge rectifier out from up there just to check it. That rectifier turned and checks out fine and this mob seems to be okay and I still have a short across there, roughly 3-4 ohms. But if we follow the circuit, if you can see down in there, there is another bridge rectifier. So I'm just going to try and turn this around and show you. So there's four legs, AC, AC, DC, DC. So let's just get it around like that. And have you got the four legs? Have I got it's those four legs down there. So I'm just gonna put my multimeter to to diode check. Of course, diode check. So if I short them you can hear. So let's measure across any two legs short and any two legs in the other direction short we can reverse the polarity short and again reverse the polarity up there and hang on short so that little bridge rectifier is gone so let me take it out quickly and then we'll come back and see if our short is gone i'll put the other rectifier back and we'll just check this small one okay right so there we've Remove this little bridge rectifier and let's put our checker to diode mode. I'm just going to measure across any two diagonal lines. Short. Short. Okay, so that diode has definitely given up the ghost. Now, let's measure across our AC line here see what resistance we get. No man, Craig, put it in properly. About 12 meg, way better than the 3 ohms we were getting, so there is no, no short. So it looks like there was our problem this little bridge diode so I don't have any of these in stock let me order a couple and then we will come back to it for those of you playing it along at home the part number I can't really see because I glued this whole thing uh, it looks like a TWO8 2 whiskey 8 so let me order a couple of these and then we can carry on cool we'll be back when we've got the parts and here we are back again through the magic of internet or editing um so this little treadmill control board this dcm D67 Delta Charlie Mike Delta 67 uh, I thought I'd give a bit of explanation so we got the, the new rectifier that goes in there but if uh, what I noticed is over here there is a package missing and this was all covered up with uh, nail polish of sorts so I've cleaned it up but anyway through the magic of uh, Google I managed to find out what that IC is. It's a TNY, that's Tango November Yankee 266. Now you can use any of the 26 range higher than the 266, so 267, 268, 269. You cannot use the 27 range for this, and it's quite a bastard IC to get in South Africa. And what that IC does is it's an offline switcher. So, if you remember, our AC comes in here, goes through our fuse, that fuse is for this side of it. Up here we have a FET, and we have our flyback diode. This FET is, if you're interested, I actually wrote it down. 
Uh, where did I write it down? It's a KN15 November 60. The flyback diode, dual diode, common cathode, UFF, that's uniform Foxtrot, Foxtrot 100-04. Interestingly enough, down here we've got two thyristors, STP6A60, that's Sierra Tango Papa, 6 Alpha 60. And that got me thinking. So we've got this fuse that's protecting that side of it. This FET here will switch. It's our speed control for our motor. And it's controlled by that microcontroller down there. That microcontroller down there will drive those two ICs. And that is probably a FET driver of sorts. So there's no way to get power here and that's when I had a look at this so I ordered a extra component so I do have that component what that component does it's an integrated uh, all-in-one circuit the transistor is in there it will switch that transformer and we have some diodes down there nice big ones so obviously our rectifier diode and capacitors to smooth so this will give us our regulated voltage, switched regulated voltage, to power our pick and all this little uh, associated equipment down here. Obviously there's a voltage regulator. And up here we've got some optocouplers and things like that. So this thing will not switch on. So I've ordered these components. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly solder them in offline i've checked the fuses they are fine i've checked the thyristors they are fine i've checked that fit and i've checked that diode so they are all fine we don't have any shorts on the board i've also gone and checked all these diodes in in and around the system and the optocouplers seem to be fine although i haven't checked them so let me solder in these components and then we will come back right here we are back i've soldered the components in up here we can see our bridge rectifier that i've put in and here's our little t ny266 and whoever worked on this board before me did quite a shit job on it if we look down here that track was broken off so you can see I've put in a little bodge wire to go from that pin to that side of the capacitor and then I've gone with those two pins down to the, the track on the surface the same that side the same down there so yeah somebody who worked on this before all they did is they cut the, the icy legs off and uh, that was that i don't know why it doesn't look like an icy that goes and then if we look at the reverse side of the board uh, let me just take the autofocus off you can see down here that track was actually broken so i just scraped a little bit back and soldered from that leg on that way so yeah whoever did this didn't do a very nice job so i think that's about oops how do i zoom out that way yeah i think that's about it for this board repair so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to prepare a lead. We'll put the AC on and we'll see that this side of the circuit should fire up. We should see some LEDs and, and whatnot, which we wouldn't have had before. So let me prepare a lead and we'll come back and have a look and see what this board does. Right, here we are. So... I've just soldered on 
plugs and lead CFR AC supply to the plug. So I'm going to just move it up. We're going to switch it on together. Uh, if I can get all of this untangled. Right. What we should do, we just bring in the multimeter here. We're going to take some measurements to see if this is working. So I'm going to plug it in and there we go, magic, that little LED has switched on, of course I'm being very careful where I touch here, so what I'm going to do, is switch our multimeter to DC volts and what we're going to do I'm just going to put a clamp here on the negative line up there just so we can see I'm going to measure a few points to the motor 3.2 volts Let's see what is happening on the gate of this transistor uh, this fed 3.2 on the drain of that fit. Let me try and get in under here. 250 volt DC on the source, 2 volts. So the fit is trying to do something. I'm not going to put a scope on here. I don't have an isolation transformer. Um, Let's just take some voltage readings on this driver here. I'm just probing arbitrary 2.6 volts. Uh, just be careful what you touch. I'm going to probe the tab of that uh, FET and you can see it's 261 volts DC. So uh, be careful how you how you go around probing here. Of course I haven't got the pin out for this chip so I don't know 2.5, 2.4, a little plus sign, 15 so that's the voltage supply for it probably. Yeah and these are probably driving pins. Uh, looking at the circuitry yes probably guess this one here runs off to the gate so this is probably the drive and that'll be the ground again I'm not going to probe this with my scope because I don't have an isolation transformer so if that IC is working we'll just move it up a bit and move the multimeter out the way and take this off so that LED down there came on. I'd rather use my pointer. The power LED. So that means we know this side of the circuit is working. Out of curiosity, we can go and measure. Let's see if I put this on the neutral line over there like so and we go and measure these uh, thyristors let's just bring this in again I'm going to measure to the tab luckily nothing nothing but let's measure what would be typically the gate of the thyristor 16 volt AC on the other one thirteen millivolts and nothing. Uh, let's measure the other points on there. Yeah, some voltage. Nothing. Nothing. So in other words, ground. 
and a little bit of voltage. These optocouplers are obviously feedback, so I'm not expecting to see anything there. Again, I'm just probing arbitrary points around here. Let's have a look at our switching chip. As you can see, 110 volts AC. This offline switcher of ours that we replaced. 110 volt AC. 110 volts down there at the bottom. 110 volts. So obviously this chip is doing its job now. It's switching this uh, little transformer. And everything is working hunky dory. Perfect. So let me just take this off here. So the moral of the story, it's always painful to work on something that somebody else has had a go at. Especially if you don't get the schematics for the board. Um, it can be a bit painful. So I'm going to leave this board to run now for a while. Let me see if we're getting any other faults. The first thing that went is obviously this bridge rectifier down here. And that bridge rectifier is for this part of the circuitry down here. We've got two IGBTs. We've got our online switcher down there. Let me just change the point around down in there. That has got a built-in FET that is driving uh, sorry, it's an offline switch. It's driving this transistor. We've got some optocouplers all over the place for feedback. I don't know why the first person cut that chip out. I, I, because they didn't pick up that the rectifier was shot. So maybe they measured here and they measured the short and they thought, oh, well, it's this thing. Generally, these uh, switches are quite robust. They don't really go. So our AC mains comes in. We've got a full wave bridge rectifier up top here. It's rectified to DC. Obviously, a nice big bulk storage capacity capacitor up here. And down here at the back, our let's just move it over. Down here at the back. Uh, switching fit to drive the motor out of here in plus and minus. The motor comes back and it's clamped via this dual diode, uh, this freewheeling or flyback diode. So because the motor is inductive, it's going to be spinning. When you, you know, we know an inductor doesn't like to see a change in current. When we stop the motor, there's a magnetic field that's got to collapse. That voltage has got to go somewhere, or that current, so it comes back through this flyback back to the positive rail, effectively clamping it to the positive rail. We've got our little, uh, I guess this is going to be an optocoupled uh, FET driver. In this case, we've only got one FET on this board. Um, and then we've got our microcontroller down here and some logic gates for whatever they require, optocoupler feedback. So I'm chuffed, the board is fixed, I'll let it run and go back to its owner. So let's finish up. Right, so we come to the end of another repair. A bit painful, somebody else got in there before me and hurt the board a little bit. I suspect the original offline switcher, but there was nothing wrong with it. And I don't know why they cut it out. It's not that difficult to desolder it, and I heard a few of the tracks when they did that. Um, the TNY266 is quite difficult to get in South Africa at the moment. Uh, RS Components is on back order. Uh, I managed to get one from Mantec Electronics. Communica doesn't have any, and uh, Mantec didn't want to give it to me because somebody had bought the whole lot. So it was a very painful procedure to get one. So they're relatively expensive little chips, about 40 rand, um, for something like that. But I don't think that it went uh, really 
there's not much to it. It's not got a lot of load. It's just driving the, the, the power side for the, um, the microcontroller, uh, the, IG, the gate driver, and things like that. So not really a lot of uh, power that it's using. Uh, the board's fixed. I'm glad. Bridge rectifier went. Uh, they go because of heat. It happens. Sometimes the guys are in the size of pretty cheap and uh, his is. Anyway, I hope you had fun. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. And um, uh, as always, take care, be safe. We'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.